Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. You're looking at part two of what's going to be a two-part series where we're talking about water intrusion because of a design defect in the flagship 1015F3 and Lympho LEM6 watches. In the first part, we turned them over, unscrewed the back using the special tool we told you you're going to need to get a hold of called a T3. Taking all the screws apart, we were able to remove the backs and show you inside a little area down here where there's some metal that could accidentally creep over the edge of the seal and allow water intrusion, which is exactly what happened on this LEM6 and led to its demise. We also showed you that you could take a, a toothpick or a little screwdriver or something and get in here and just kind of press that metal back down because it's really not, um, it just, it's, it's just wrapped around here. We'll open this one up and show you. It's just kind of taped and looped around the edge and if you can press it down or even use some other electrical tape or something to tape that corner down, then when you put it back, it's not gonna lay over the edge. This is how mine came was open kind of like this so that when this was in position it was over where the gasket goes get my magnifying glass to show you and inhibited the seal exactly like that I thought it was sealed tight so did the company the screws were tight but water got inside of here when we did the immersion test oh you goodness alright <laughs> there is a bubble in the way. After that, I just took it out and dried it off, and I thought everything was fine, but it wasn't, and the watch is basically dead. So, for the LEM6, today, we're going to take it apart. See how everything is folded up in here, where all the components are, and how in the world those antennas are hidden. Let me get the, the environment ready for you. Okay, let's go. Actually, you know, I took several hours yesterday and through the night and even tried to charge it all last night uh, to no avail. So what you're going to see inside of here has been cleaned up a bit. If you look at the earlier part, you notice that that was all gummied up. And I got in there to try to clean it somewhat and uh, figure out if that would have affected anything. Anyway, long story short, a lot of work on this and so far, um, nope, it's still dead. So... You luck out, so do I. We're going to take it apart and look inside. Before I begin, I wanted to compare a few things between this broken LEM6 from water intrusion and the fully functional, I'm not going to mess with it, F3 with identical build. Let me pop the back off on that. And look how clean it is. Look, look all around the uh, heart rate sensor, those connectors here. And in particular, in a moment, we'll look here. You see the uh, level of corrosion that's that's happened? i got a different magnifying glass for you so you can see this a little better. See it around the components? This is what happens if you get just a little bit of water in here. I'm, I'm serious. So even though your waterproof watch may claim that it's fully waterproof, <laughs> if it gets just a little bit in there, the corrosion is horrendous. Now, watch this. These are the pins, right? This is where your connector, your charging connector goes. And on the other side, there are these flat little metal plates. And they press against these little connectors here, which are raised. Can you see this? There's four of them. And they have kind of a little spring action to press against those plates. And there's corrosion all around them as well. I spent a lot of time here trying to make sure that these things were making good solid contact. And because they're this kind of a springy thing pushing up against the uh, metal of the back cover, uh, I'm not sure if it gets a lot of vibration. It might be a little bit, um, it might interrupt every now and then. The, the, your watch might suddenly turn off. If that happens, just know it might be because the spring action here has softened over time. Here it is clean and nice, but nonetheless, it's a very intricate design. Um, 
I don't know that it needs to be this fancy, and I've never seen it this fancy on another watch. Nonetheless, that is how power and data get transferred through the cover to the watch. Okay, anything else you guys want to see between the two? How clean and nice that job was done? And how botched this one was? Which led to the rooster crowing. Okay, led to the uh, problem we just talked about. Let's jump in. Let's dissect this. I'm going to set this one aside with its cover. Bring over the lympho. Take off this because we'll be popping it around all over the place. And let's begin. Now, one of the first things, if you've watched any of my videos before, that I always try to tell you guys is um, if your watch gets into a problem uh, where it's frozen, it's hung, it's boot looping, meaning it reboots and it keeps trying to boot, but it can't go any further. One of the most common things you can do to try to fix it is simply disconnect the battery from the watch. Easier said than done on this one. On many of them, as you've seen in the back, there's a little connector and you just pop it up, leave it for a couple of seconds, and then press it back down again. Again, what we're trying to do is lift this whole battery unit up like that. When you do, you find that it has some connectors in here. There's this whole circuit that's attached on the top. There's these wires here. And when you get underneath, you'll find in this corner area right over here. Are you guys seeing that? There is the power connector. See the red and black wire coming down? to that little thing. Now yeah, maybe we can use this. I don't know. I'm going to come in here and grab the wires, get it loose a little bit, and then lift it up. There. All right. We got it up. And it just pops up just like on all the others. And now the power is removed. That's the battery. It looks like it's in its own little bag, and it's got all the uh, sealing around it to hold this little micro strip of circuitry on here, which we're going to need to take off if we're going to really take this watch apart. So, goodbye to non-destructive testing, and hello to opening up this watch. Let's begin with this little thing. It looks like it might be the microphone or speaker, right? It's right over here on the side. It looks like it's... Uh, little round thing that we might be able to pop up just by reaching in and prying it up. And there. That was easy enough. Uh-huh. And now we're left with one thing holding this whole unit in, and that's this, this uh, circuit board strip. Well, a couple of ways we could tackle this, I guess. We could try to move this out. And get down there or we could try to just simply pull this thing out and see if it just slips in let's try that first uh -huh. yeah it's kind of coming out aha it did okay let's look at what we've got here oh it's a connector that goes in there well, good thing I'm not going to try to put it back in because it's under that plate. So I guess what we would need to do actually is take that plate off. All right, let's do that. Anyway, here is this whole heart rate diode thing. Interface with power and data and connection to the speaker microphone and the battery itself plus all that ceiling. And how easy is it for this to come off? Reason being is, if I wanted to try a different battery, if we had to replace the battery, could we do it? Yeah, we could. Pretty easily. There. It's uh, definitely sticky all the way around. This is all the circuitry to keep the battery from exploding. You know, shutting off the overcharging capability. And that's the battery with nothing written on it. It might be sealed inside of a bag here which in a little while we might explore. Uh, anyway, we'll set that aside. Any questions? Nothing yet? Okay, that's good. Battery and heart rate diode. 
Now let's come back over here. Well, this looks like it's another connector, doesn't it? And it is, and there we are, disconnected already from that. So we've got that connector and that one. Uh-huh. How about this circuit? Okay. One guy wrote me once and said, use a toothpick, don't use metal. You know, metal can short circuit and ruin the circuitry. You got to use something padded and soft, like a toothpick. And I really should be doing that, but I'm so comfortable using my little screwdriver, and I'm not really going to put this back together. So forgive me, I'm just going to go ahead and use my um, trusty little screwdriver. Whoa! Wow, this thing has got the most bizarre circuitry I've ever seen. Again, it looks like floating connectors held in with pressure. Don't know what this thing does, but it's a placeholder in there. You think it could be part of the antennas? Hmm. Those of you who are RF engineers, feel free to comment on anything you see here, especially if you have an idea where any of the four antennas, Wi-Fi, cellular, GPS, and Bluetooth. They're all in here folded up somehow. Anyway, there's another little piece of something. Now we come over to the side. We've got this whole skirt all insulated in here against, I presume, the circuit board in the bottom. Black wire coming over. I've got a couple of screws here and here. So let's take these out. So far in my destructive testing, I don't think I've destroyed anything. I think I could actually put it back together. Mm. Magnetic screwdriver, but sometimes it doesn't quite. All right, we'll just pound it out. Come on out. Well, maybe it'll come out when we lift it. Well, all right. You see how all this uh, plastic is kind of inserted in here. So it begs the idea that maybe this whole thing can just lift right out, especially after having unscrewed it like that. Can we? Oh, it's looking like it wants to. That thing might want to come up. Forgive me if I move off camera because I'm also looking through uh, my headpiece here directly at the watch. By now, I'm sure you found by watching me that I have not been trained in electronics disassembly or repair. I actually stumbled into all of this, this channel included. <laughs> so you get what you got. This is cool. This is just little tape. That's got the black wire thing going to it. I'm taking bets. How many of you think this is a Bluetooth module? Raise your hand. Uh, the uh, vibration thing that gives you that little buzz feedback? Mm -hmm. What else could it be? Boy, I wish I had a, a user's manual on this. Got a big black wire though, so and one of them, so to me that could be an antenna wire. Those of you who really do know about this, and I'm talking to you, number one, Finau, and uh, all the others out there, IQI, all you engineers, uh, here's an opportunity to look at some advanced technology for your future watch development. Okay. Wow. Is that a, okay, that's our little screw that we've loosened. I am really glad you guys like long, drawn-out reviews. <laughs> you can always put it in 2x, you know, until I get to <laughs> get this darn thing out. Wow. What to do? What to do? Want to use a platypus? That's my name for it. I don't see any place else that it's locked in there. Boy, I don't want to break it. So I'm going to pause the video, get it out, tell you how I did it. Aha! This thing. Remember this thing? That's where we insert our uh, SIM card. 
Look, I can pull that out. And that's where we would stick the SIM in? How waterproof could that possibly be? You mean they're relying on this little plastic to keep water out of here? That's it? Boom, like that? Those little edges that you have to push in just hard enough to go past that little... Your whole watch is being protected by that little bitty rubber seal. Those two... Wow, I'm off the camera. Those two right there. Whoa, and look how big a gaping hole. You know I'm getting a little more goosey about water retention on this thing, having looked at the... I thought this would be a sealed compartment, like they do with the headphone jacks on those phones that are actually waterproof. Um, they're sealed from the rest of the device, but wow, that's wide open. All right, now that we've taken that out, it should, yeah, it should lift right out. Okay, wow, lots of interesting discoveries. I wish I could go back and re-edit the video I just finished, but hopefully you guys will watch this one. All right. It is an antenna. See that? That's your typical antenna connector right there. Here's something else held on with a little plate there. Let's lift that up. Let's get this antenna off. And it says, can you read it? Probably not. Let's try with the magnifying glass. GPS. So this is your little GPS module. Uh huh. You remember the other watch we reviewed, the Android watch that had that funny little dongly things hanging off of it? Forget the number, it was an odd number. Um, turns out that was also the GPS module. These things are getting like self contained. All they need is an antenna, it looks like. Maybe it even supplies power, grounding probably there, and an antenna. This is a strip, grounding uh, strip there. Anyway, GPS module. Now we're getting, getting down here where we have a lot of other little connectors all the way around that tie in with the screens and the buttons and such. So let's lift them up. Just like that. Whoa, this is just filled with you know, these are expensive components, so instead of just soldering things in, they've gone all out to make this a really uh, easily serviceable thing. Here's another one of those connectors. Wow, that's going to be fun. Okay. It says plus minus, and I think it just pops out as well. Yep, yeah, there we go. That is going underneath, possibly to the power button. There's a screw to get in here. Right up next to the screen. And they're good and tight. Okay, good, that one came out. Any more screws? Yep, opposite. See that one over there? Let's get that one out. Okay. That's the antenna connection. So far, we've only seen one official antenna connection for GPS. And that's the main circuit board, I'm pretty sure. Is it ready to pop out itself? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, this is fun! This is fun. Now we're talking. All right. We got the rest of the watch with buttons and screen. But let's look at this little enchilada. It's more like a tostada. Actually, it's more like a, a Dorito. <laughs> I'm presuming this is just stick them on here, right? Let's undo all of this. Shielding, that's the word I'm thinking of. This is all just kind of like shielding. I believe, I don't think it's antenna itself because they usually have to have a certain kind of a contour to them. 
Let's pull the shielding off. Whoa, and the shielding is on top of a thin layer that's coming off of, I presume, protection from the electric, the electric field coming from the shielding. Wow. I know, I know, I could cut all this stuff out of the video, but this is more like one of those National Geographic documentaries looking for Bigfoot. You never know what you're going to find, and I like finding it together with you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, oh no. Not like I need to save it, but I still like to. That's weird. Uh, this corner piece, I think I'm going to lose that corner piece. And the rest of it out like that. Yeah. So there's just that little piece there that's stuck really hard to this. Eh, I'll just let it hang. Okay, here's our circuit board. Here's proprietary stuff you can read now. W650, MB, VO1, and so forth. Anything else you see in here? Look at some of the writing, because you're never going to see this unless you rip into your watch. Any antenna connectors? How are they doing it? How are they getting the cellular Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas? Is everything on this circuit board? It must be. And that's the only one that looks like the three we typically see on other watches that go into the bands. This has got a heat shield, I presume. It also looks like it's just snapped in place. So we may be able to lift it off. Yep. Pretty easy. Yep. And here... If you guys like this kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up on the video. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down so I know what to do in the future. I actually enjoy doing this. It's fun to do it on, oops, I broke it on, on camera. But if it's wasting your time, you know, I can do it by myself. Okay, here's the other side of it. There's all the different, uh, wow, it's a Samsung chip, huh? Look at that. Uh-huh. MediaTek arm and some other stuff. And that's basically your watch. I'm still befungled, bedoodled, bedazzled about how the antennas work. Don't know what these things are here with the kind of amber color to them. You seeing those? There and there. These could be related this is another one of those pressure kind of uh i can't get you in focus there where'd it go there they are wow they look like little pressure connectors hmm hmm okay so that is the main motherboard. And then we're back to the watch. We have all these different things that are diving down underneath the screen, it looks like. Now in the screen, of course, we've got the 400 by 400 pixel screen. And then we've also got the touch sensitive um, circuitry that's clear between the glass and the screen itself. Is there anything I can do to take this further down? The fact that there's so many connectors still here, I don't, you don't need that many odd different ones for the screen. There's only two should be you know, like for the screen and for the um, sensor. Now that's probably one of them because they're usually at the very top and bottom. What are all the others about? It looks like something wants to come up. And it may be a circuit underneath here, so thank goodness I didn't do my fingernails yet. Let's come in here. Yeah, yeah, there's some circuitry there. That's like an insulator 
expander, separator. Here's some more insulation. Ooh, look at this. Could this be where the antennas are hiding? Oh, yeah, look at this. Look at this, folks. I think that's an antenna. Uh, whoa, okay. What do we got? What is this? Wow, okay. And it disappears under a big ribbon cable. There's some circuitry, it looks like, here. That looks like it could be antenna patterns there. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to get it any further than that. But it came around to a little connector that snapped in, and it's got a lot of pins and things. Solder joints on a circuit card right there. Wow. That's it. There's two big plates right there. Looks like providing power or something. Connection. <laughs> I don't know. There's that little thing coming out from underneath and that. I started to pull a little bit on this thing. I want to show you what happens. I don't know what else. It looks like this is a another little circuit board down in here that is kind of glued on around here. Oh, no. So it goes underneath to that button. So that button and, and that button come up here to this connector. That's what's happening here. I still don't know what this little white white thing is. It disappears below there, going someplace else. And it doesn't give way easy. But you know what? I bet it goes to the microphone. One of these is microphone. One of these is speaker, we think. Remember the other module that was there? Um, or was that the... Uh, that was the GPS module, right? Huh. Anyway... That thing looks like it probably goes to speaker or microphone. And these are the buttons, which means on this side, that connector is probably the same thing. The buttons right there and right there that come up to here. So this is how the buttons hook on. This is one of these is screen control, and one of these is probably the touch sensitive um, control. And then underneath here, you got a uh, covering for the uh, screen itself. And on the other side, the uh, touch sensitivity area. And that's the watch. Buttons, everything's accounted for. Except for antennas. Where are they? I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. Ah, oh, shucks. Somewhere, somewhere in here. Help me out, guys. If you know where they are, what they look like, and how they've... How they, it works. I mean, we've tested these things and you do get good solid cellular and Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Um, at least I presume those of you who have bought either the uh, LEM6 or the F3 and are testing it out, what is your experience in terms of the um, capabilities of the radios? Do you lose Wi-Fi regularly or does it hold for you? Bluetooth, how's it working? We all would love to know. And then this, this silly thing that started it all is just taped on here, sticky, wrapped around the corner of the battery. And that's the whole reason we are here today. Now, the battery itself, inside this bag, no labels on it. Well, the specs tell you what size it is, and maybe it's a good battery that I could use for the F3 if I need to later. So I'm not going to take this thing any further down than that, just to tell you it's the battery with its circuitry all installed. And there you have it. This is the LEM6. Complete teardown with a follow-up on the uh, water intrusion problem. Once again, to recap, there were two areas now we found that there could be water intrusion. 
One was that little place on the, uh, on the rubber where the metal came across. It's at the beginning of the video. And two, and I think even more important, is here where the little uh, SIM card slot is. You guys check yours. If you don't have it pushed in solid, if it's just in that little one stop, that could definitely lead to water intrusion because there's nothing else preventing water coming in except for that little seal. And it's not much of a seal as that. There is no protective compartment. If you pop this thing out while you're around water, I guarantee you, you'll have more water rushing in here than you have in most Android watches that have the little cover in the back and the SIM card in the back. However, they claim what? IP67, which is up to a meter underwater for 30 minutes protection. So let us know if you get water intrusion, okay? Or if you don't, if you swim with it and it's all perfect, we all would love to hear from you. So in the comments down below, please uh, share your experiences. We'd really appreciate it. That does it for today. You can see I am so starving to have an Android watch to review that we're starting to take them apart. Come on, companies, mail in your new ones. We've got two uh, new Android watches with 4G capability coming in. They were supposed to be here before the uh, Chinese festival. They haven't even been sent out yet. I just got confirmation yesterday. So it's going to be a little while. They're having some problems. Um, Finau is sending one of them. And I think Finau actually makes the other one, but they're coming in under a different brand. But we'll see. Uh, we've got a few more things in the, uh, in the making. And again, why I ask you to subscribe, if we have a huge number of subscribers, which we're getting there, we're over 40,000, um, some of the watch developers in Indiegogo and Kickstarter will show interest in previewing their products here on the channel. And I would love to get some of those early prototype um, crowdfunded watches for you. So your subscription is really appreciated. It does more than you can imagine. And of course, any thumbs up you want to give us on videos helps and sharing it with your friends. It's all about watches. I love them. If you like them, I can help you out and give you good reviews. Thanks for watching. We will be back probably with a fitness band until I get another Android watch or another one breaks, whichever comes first. Thanks for watching. See you again.